Hello YouTube! Today I want to show you how to build such a nice looking and simple uh, RGB LED matrix clock. This one is made out of a 64 by 64 uh, pixel RGB matrix with uh, P4 characteristics. That means every LED is apart from each other with 4 millimeters. They are available in smaller or bigger P values and it's always then the millimeter that is different. This is now running with an ESP32 and the I2S shield from Brian Luck, which is yeah available on his Tindy and I will link it down in the description so it's pretty straightforward to get it working. I used the PCB I ordered myself on PCBWay, which is also the sponsor of this video. So please check them out. And yeah, I want to go into the detail of the source code as hardware wise it's quite simple. But the story behind this is I used this LED matrix for about 8 years now and it's yeah quite dirty already he is very much dirt on it but it worked flawlessly for the past eight years it's not that visible for the camera but yeah it's just showing the time and on the back you can see it's also not that perfect, but it was the beginning of my electronics Arduino tinkering. You can see here an DS3231 uh, um, RTC clock, which is connected to an Atmega64, I think, which is running Arduino and the Sanguino variant, if I remember correctly. The panel itself is cut here in the middle and it was some text RGB matrix which I got from the um, scrapyard and I tinkered around with it for about two years when I was 13 or 12 and finally got it running then after some time. The hardest part for me then back then was uh, this transistor here. This will turn off the LEDs while an update is pushed out to them. That way it's only possible to get a high frame rate. Otherwise it would be needed to write directly into the image. And now it's turning off the LEDs while the um, new data is pushed into the shift registers you see here on top and on the bottom and there were already some of them broken but I simply put others on top then I piggybacked them here there's just another one on top because one channel was broken back then and yeah the clock is running very precise it's only two minutes off after about eight years which is quite impressive for such a cheap chinese rtc module maybe this one was a real real-time clock module back then but that just to show what uh, or why i did this same this new one here as i yeah, looked enough at this clock. So I turned it off, took one day to create this one. And yeah, I will yeah, take you to the PC and show you how the yeah, program itself does work. You can see here the time is shown in yeah, hours and minutes and the seconds will go yeah, mirrored here over so you have kind of a feeling how much second has seconds have passed and of course the yeah date is shown 
As this is running the ESP32, it got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so the uh, brightness can be set via uh, Wi-Fi, via an HTTP server on it. And also it's possible to yeah, make new features like show your YouTube subscriber counter or anything else you want to show on it, like a Twitter message, whatever. Whatever is possible via the internet. As mentioned, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. They are celebrating their sixth year of existence and I am using their service for about a year now and I am quite happy with the quality still. They did send me this celebration package with, which is with a badge, a t-shirt and some PCB rulers where you can see the quality how they make the PCBs and also of course the PCBs for this project are from them and the quality is very good check them out as they produce PCBs for as low as five dollars and you can even get a free coupon so you only need to pay for the chipping these days. Hardware wise, I only soldered the minimum required parts to the I2S shield for the ESP. For once I soldered two power wires to this connector, but only soldered them and not with the screw terminal to make the whole thing a bit more compact. So the magnet corners are not um, disturbed by any parts. I soldered the Schottky diode in to uh, make it possible to power the ESP via USB and the matrix at the same time via the 5 volt power supply. You can get such a power supply from AliExpress or eBay for around $10. And yeah, it needs to output 5 volt and 10 ampere is quite good. It can be less, but yeah, the more the better. Also, I bridged the selector for the diode bypass. I soldered the ESPD1 ESP32 module with pin headers directly to the PCB. Then on the underside, we have the connector for the matrix itself, a capacitor to suppress any yeah, voltage spikes or something like this that and also i bridged the cd and e selector for the rows because this is a 64 by 64 matrix it does need all of them on smaller ones you can yeah remove the e part and yeah hardware wise this is already it and then we need to take a look at the software On boot it will say please wait and tries to connect to the Wi-Fi and then will download or connect to an NTP server to get the current time. You can select the your time zone in that code and yeah we will take a look at that next. To build such a clock on your own you need a few libraries for your Arduino environment. For once you need of course the ESP32 library which you can install via this link and I will also put it in the description so you just can copy it. You need to go into settings in Arduino and copy the yeah, URL into this yeah, board manager URL list. If you have already some there you can click on this button and add a new line to yeah, add another one to it. You will need to install this ESP32 library itself. You can do it via the board manager and wait for it to download all the different yeah, cores. And there you can then enter ESP32 and it will pop up. You then need to install it and this will take a few minutes, but that's no big deal. You just have to wait. 
If you have already installed the ESP32 library, then you of course don't need to do it. After the installation of the ESP32 library, you can close the board manager and go to the yeah, library manager. And there you need to install the Adafruit GFX, which you can find by yeah, entering GFX and then yeah, take, take a look at the Adafruit GFX library and just install it. You also need to install the bus.io library. This will also include the I2C library from Adafruit. If you have it not installed, then it will throw an error which says I2C error. And here you can see it's included. So you simply install that. In general, that is all you need. You could also install the ESP32 I2S library. I have this included in my code, but you can simply doing it by yeah, download the zip file and installing it via including a zip file library. And if it's successful, it will show it here on the screen. Now I can open the code itself, which is here and this is a bit stuffed but in general it has quite a few yeah things included for example the over the air update is enabled with it which is done here and also it has the settings of the backlight intensity or the brightness itself which will be read from the spiff memory and can be written via a URL command. And yeah, I will just click on compile and see if it works. It does not because you have to select an ESP board, of course. And in my example or in my board, I am using the D1 mini ESP32 variant and I can now click on compile and you will see if it's successful here on the bottom. If you are flashing it to a board, you also need to select it here to your COM port. Or if you already have flashed it once, you can flash it to a clock itself. As you can see here, this is my clock running and hanging on the wall. There's also a password set to the over the air update, which is simply admin. You can change it to your needs. And also, if you want to change the overall design, you can do it here. There, the time will be read from the time library and written to the display. You can also see that now the compiling is done and is it is successful. In the background you have to also put here your yeah, Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi password and upload that to the watch or to the clock. And here you can also see the modified library which I did because of the define of the width and height of the matrix and also the color depth. So in this case, every color has four bit color depth. You can also set it to eight bit. It will use more RAM then, but with only one matrix connected, it's not that bad. You can also here define the pins the matrix is using. This is correct for the I2C shield I am using from Brian Luck. And yeah, also the I2S library is included here and is licensed by Espressive. In general, this is it. To set a new uh, brightness intensity via this command, in my case, the clock is at 147. So if I enter that, you set the normal brightness, the brightness at night, which will start at 23 o'clock and ends at 8 o'clock. 
depending on your settings. It will also then yeah, answer with the set settings. So if you only want to know the current settings, you simply can enter this and it will return with the current yeah, day and night settings for the backlight, for the brightness intensity. In general, this is it already. It's quite simple and um, yeah. Okay, one thing I have to mention is I am using an FM FM6126 RGB matrix and this needs an initialization at startup. So this is done in the init.h file. It's a bit modified to make it smaller than the example on the RGB library. So um, this will be called from here at the beginning and if you have another pinout you also have to select it here if you are using that RGB matrix. That's kind of all you need to know. To set another time zone you have to enter it here. This is just the value you have to enter to get a different time zone. So this is for one hour plus or minus depending on your location. So I hope you like this small project and if you rebuild it please link it to my Twitter and I will take a look at it as I would love to see other projects based on this. So one problem I still have is sometimes on boot the ESP does not connect to the Wi-Fi. As you can see here the connect counter counts up but does not connect to the Wi-Fi itself. So I need to reset it sometimes and then it's there. I don't know why. I will look deeper into it but as this is meant to be not restarted so much I will leave it like it is for now and yeah we'll just reset it if it does not connect even if it's a bit buggy but yeah it's the ESP. Okay see you next time bye.